good morning everyone uh, the topic of today's presentation as you all know is uh, talking a little bit about three mathematical approaches to address microbial corrosion um, as uh, was introduced uh, previously my name is Reza for the surname is Jabahir Deshti. I have a PhD in material science with a background in metallurgical engineering. I have more than two decades of experience in both field and academic uh, and academia uh, as a corrosion uh, scientist and uh, corrosion engineer. And my uh, the fields of expertise that I, I have worked on uh, are corrosion management, microbial corrosion, and future studies. For more information, you can Google, you can um, go to LinkedIn and see my profile. Uh, these are some of the books that I have authored, uh, published by reputable uh, publishers. And recently, I've been working on um, finishing a book on corrosion management to be published by Wiley in the US. Uh, I would assume that we all know a little bit about microbial corrosion. Although microbial corrosion is a topic that normally uh, can be covered in a five day long course, but uh, to <clears throat> just summarize what it is, uh, microbiologically influenced corrosion or MIC is essentially electrochemical corrosion. And uh, it, uh, knows, it, not something, it is not something uh, apart from that. However, the main difference is that it can be initiated, sometimes enhanced or even inhibited by microorganisms, macroorganisms, such as, but not limited to bacteria, fungi, archaea, etc., etc. So it is not that whenever you have bacteria around, then you could have the possibility of increasing the rate of corrosion. It is quite possible that corrosion will be inhibited. Almost all engineering materials are um, uh, vulnerable to microbial corrosion. Uh, for some reasons, uh, uh, titanium alloys, uh, we have not yet received any report about their uh, vulnerability to uh, MIC. Microbial corrosion uh, is a term the, I mean, microbiologically influenced corrosion is a term preferred by X NACE that was uh, basically came to uh, the literature in 1993. And uh, NACE prefers influenced instead of induced uh, to be used in uh, addressing this type of this corrosion. And uh, um, we must bear in mind that microbial corrosion is not limited to bacteria only, okay? It is quite possible that you have other forms of life also affecting the course and severity of corrosion. Uh, economic importance of, coro of MIC is, I have given you here some, import uh, some figures that uh, can help you understand why mathematical modeling of MIC is very important. In 1993, Direct, uh, direct cost of MIC to U.S. industries was estimated to be between 30 to 50 billion dollars per year, and in 2001, direct cost due to corrosive action of SRB, sulfur-reducing bacteria, on U.S. industries alone was estimated to be between four to six billion dollars annually. Again, in 2001, U.S. oil and gas industries are estimated to be suffering from a direct cost of MIC about $2 billion. Um, the US industry spent more than $1 billion. They are spending more than $1 billion annually on biocides to chemically uh, uh, fight against MIC. So with all these figures in mind, it does make sense to uh, try to understand uh, MIC as much as possible. In addition to the figures that I gave you, it is also a well-known um, uh, issue uh, about the risk of MIC. For example, what happened in 2006 to the BP-owned um, uh, 
pipeline in Alaska that due to a corrosive effect of mainly sulfur reducing bacteria uh, they had lost more than 200,000 gallons uh, of oil uh, although the pipe uh, was reported to be going through all the uh, corrosion management related issues such as pigging almost daily pig again it didn't work and in 2015 there was a natural gas leak in the US that caused uh, a lot of problem uh, what is MIC basically we are not talking just about sulfur uh, I mean corrosion related bacteria CRP or corrosion related archaea corrosion related uh, archaea uh, the reason is that bacteria and archaea they can be regarded as left and right hand they are similar to each other but they are not the same these uh, uh, examples you see here that has been uh, taken from an, um, studies and analysis carried on on the uh, waters in the Persian Gulf can uh, show you how complicated the scenario is and this is the same for other parts of the world Therefore, when we are talking about mathematical modeling of such complex systems, it is not just to rely on one type of bacteria or just taking chemical uh, factors into consideration. Like, for example, uh, we may think that, oh, okay, I have considered pH as a major player, so I'm safe. No, you are not. Because sometimes bacteria such as um, sulfur oxidizing bacteria they are capable of pr producing sulfuric acid with pH 1 which is not tolerable for for example sulfate reducing bacteria so you have to be very careful about your assumptions the first uh, model that I will present here is based on fuzzy calculus and it is based on a paper that um, I uh, published some years ago about uh, a capability of fuzzy logic and fuzzy uh, calculus to let us predict the uh, corrosivity of um, um, bacteria the, on duplex stainless steel. We will start with uh, some assumptions to make our model. Before that, I would like to just uh, briefly explain what we mean by fuzzy uh, cal uh, calculus. In um, uh, today's uh, understanding of logics, we have basically two sets, two approaches. One is binary approach, one zero, and then fuzzy approach that considers values between one and zero. The logic that we use in uh, uh, today's computers is based on binary uh, logic. A statement is either true with a value of one or it is not true with a value of zero. But when we talk about a fuzzy approach, values could vary between zero and one. Uh, here we will uh, then um, try to use fuzzy calculus in order to make our fuzzy model and then put it into experiment to see how well it's performing the material we are considering is carbon steel and we define three sets of uh, properties g measures all features of the given carbon steel for example uh, the mechanical physical chemical properties okay assume that somehow we can actually measure all the mechanical, chemical, and uh, physical properties of the carbon steel we have, and then we uh, <clears throat> put it as G1, G2, G3, Gn, all right? So we have a, a set of properties that cover all the features of the carbon steel we are considering. As metallurgical engineers, you probably know that we also have different classes of carbon steel all right now 
Then we come to S. S measures all features of the given carbon steel that will make it resistant to MIC. Okay, so out of all the properties that your carbon steel has, there could be some of these some of these features that could make it resistant to microbial corrosion. This we show as S and A is the fuzzy probability to show uh, with what probability each member of the set G could become a member of the set S. In other words, A measures the fuzzy probability what could be the um, possibility that uh, some features of the carbon steel we have could make it resistant to uh, microbial corrosion. With all these three sets defined, we could uh, schem uh, schematically uh, present it uh, as shown here. So you have a set called G with all the properties of the carbon steel and you have uh, uh, another set S that has all the properties that makes this carbon steel resistant to microbial corrosion and then you have A which measures the fuzzy probability of how one or more elements of G could become uh, one or more elements of S. Hope so far you have got an idea about the basic of the fuzzy uh, model. Then we define what we call um, here as uh, uh, fuzzy um, uh, equations for a given bacteria. For example, for sulfur reducing bacteria here, I hope that you can see the cursor here. Uh, then we define a fuzzy probability that shows that for SRB only, how uh, uh, the, uh, this fuzzy probability uh, can be defined in terms of function A, I, K. The same will also be true for other uh, bacteria. As you can see here, this F, IKGJ defines the fuzzy likelihood of an existing feature such as K from the range of universal features GJ to become an element of SI. Therefore, this probability uh, equation here defines that uh, fuzzy probability that we were looking at, SI. The same is for um, iron-reducing bacteria. If you remember from the previous slide, I used the in this K for SRB, and here I use uh, L for iron-reducing bacteria. The same, almost the same probability function is defined here, and then we use T to show an environment in which you have both SRB and IRB. Why this is important? Because most of the models that I have seen so far uh, are just focusing on one type of bacteria. They think that, for example, if they have uh, considered SRB, then they are safe. No, they are not. When you have more than one type of uh, corrosion-related bacteria in the system, chances are that the corrosion rates you get will be much higher than having just one species. That's why in my uh, approach, I have also tried to define a fuzzy function for the situation in which we have SRB, sulfur reducing bacteria, and IRB, iron reducing bacteria. Now, as now we have all these functions, one function shows the fuzzy probability for the K for when you have SRB in the system, and therefore uh, 
some features of carbon steel could uh, render it resistant to microbial corrosion by SRB. Then you have a, fu uh, uh, a fuzzy uh, probability function for iron reducing bacteria. What could be the fuzzy probability where the carbon steel becomes resistant to microbial corrosion by iron reducing bacteria? And then you have the uh, fuzzy probability to make sure how carbon steel becomes resistant to a combination of sulfur reducing bacteria and iron reducing bacteria. When you have all these functions that are shown as FAIK, FAIL, FAIT, then you uh, define uh, the so called fuzzy composite function. By using this uh, methodology, you define that when you look at the range of all the uh, variables you have you just look at them and you take uh, certain values based on fuzzy composite functions and then um, then we put all these together to come up with a rather long um, uh, composite function that says that if you have <clears throat> these composite functions under what conditions they could be zero under sub, uh, what conditions they cannot be zero if they are not zero then you define some um, coefficients at beta as beta l beta t beta k that as you can see they have a relationship as such this is all known mathematics uh, by uh, mathematicians who are familiar with fuzzy functions now that you have this okay now that you have this then you say that all right um, if i have something like beta k this shows the possibility for getting SRB and carbon steel interaction. If I have beta L, this shows the weight required for interaction between carbon steel and iron reducing bacteria. And for beta T, uh, it is like uh, the interaction between the mixed culture of the, back of the two species and the material. This will show us will also give us uh, an opportunity if for example it happens that beta k is larger than beta l it means that the environment that has srb is less likely to cause corrosion of carbon steel than the iron reducing bacteria containing environment this is a very interesting and important feature of this model because according to NACE standards just having bacteria around does not necessarily mean that you are exposed to the risk of microbial corrosion this approach by fuzzy logic clearly shows that there could be a possibility that having a, a specific bacterial species around does not necessarily mean that that, uh, that you are being treated by just that bacterial species. There could be a, an interaction between the two. And why I use the uh, sulfur reducing bacteria and iron reducing bacteria? In my experiments, I realized that iron reducing bacteria are aerobic. They need oxygen. So when you have both together, iron reducing bacteria will start to mop up, to consume oxygen so the environment will become anaerobic and then suitable for self-reducing bacteria so these uh, guys will work together to make the environment as corrosive as possible now what could be the odds what could be the fuzzy probabilities by which carbon steel could become resistant and um, based on that i defined uh, beta as uh, the uh, uh, in the way that you see here I tried 
to apply my model to when the carbon steel is exposed to stress corrosion cracking for for testing stress corrosion cracking i use ssrt slow strain rate uh, uh, and uh, based on that <clears throat> slow strain rate testing by that i uh, defined that if i wanted to measure the bacterial activity term in terms of beta uh, i have to uh, define the average load and then find the maximum load and uh, <clears throat> uh, if i divide the average load uh, by maximum load this can define beta for me and how that happened uh, i used uh, uh, some ssrt uh, apparatus and i applied uh, strain um, uh, stress corrosion cracking tests in those environment for srb irb and the mixed culture of the two these uh, these results can be typical typically summarized in this figure as you can see in this figure uh, under the uh, situations we tested uh, both SRB and iron reducing bacteria showed almost the same corrosive effect on carbon steel in terms of loss of strength and therefore uh, time to failure they both failed around uh, 70 17 something hours however <clears throat> when you had srb and irb the failure happened in longer time in other words if you do the calculations you will see that the resistant of carbon steel we used against microbial corrosion when you have SRB and IRB was 82%. This means that uh, the probability, fuzzy probability of not failure of carbon steel in a culture, in a, in a mixed culture system as such is much higher than having just one species for this particular system. And as you can see, the results that we get for SRB and IRB uh, are quite um, similar to each other. And this can basically uh, validate the uh, model that we have developed. Under these circumstances, we can, we can um, uh, easily say that with with what fuzzy probability it is uh, okay to use macro to, to use carbon steel in your system so if you carried out all your um, uh, what you call it um, typical tests such as culture tests or culture independent tests and you realize that in your system you only have SRB and no other things, then you have to be worried because the probability for uh, resistance to microbial corrosion could be very uh, thin than having another bacteria with you. Like for example here, when you have SRB and IRB, the resistance of your carbon steel could be much higher to microbial corrosion than having one single type culture. This is very important because what I said at the beginning is that uh, this is something that we uh, get from microbiologists. And uh, here I would like to emphasize, put emphasis on one point. When it comes to microbial corrosion, you have to 
rely on both corrosion engineers and microbiologists. Don't go for microbiologists only. All right. This is the, the experience I have had so far. Some organizations may uh, have uh, uh, microbial corrosion courses, but when you look at the uh, lecturers, you see that they are basically um, microbiologists with academic background, which is good to some extent. However, you do need a corrosion engineer with high uh, level of experience in microbial corrosion by your side. Let me just give you one example. <coughs> Sorry. Microbiologists normally use yeast, yeast extract as a carbon source for their experiments because this will um, uh, boost up the growth of bacteria. This is a, a normal practice. Uh, for microbiologists but yeast extract has been proved to working as a corrosion inhibitor therefore the results you get from the so-called MIC experiments in your lab will not cope with what you expect uh, to see on the field all right so uh, what I'm trying to say is that whatever you hear from microbiologists, no matter how many years they have been experienced in the field of microbial corrosion, whatever you hear from them, definitely check it with a corrosion engineer. Don't take their words for granted. Okay, so much for fuzzy model. Then I will... Um, uh, spend some time on qualitative model. This qualitative model is based on our interpretation of a model that in 1987 was uh, proposed by two scientists uh, called, if I hope that I'm pronouncing their surnames correctly, Schutten and Gellings. Um, the Schutten Gellings, or uh, so called SG uh, model, is based on the five steps here. First, you prepare a questionnaire, and in that questionnaire, you ask about the usefulness and frequency of use of each of the five anti corrosion measures. What are the five anti corrosion measures? use of chemicals, I mean chemical treatments such as biocytes, then physical methods such as coatings, then electrical methods such as cathodic protection, then um, mechanical methods such as for example pigging and scrubbing, uh, I mean physical mechanical removal of debris and biofilms, and the fifth is the uh, material selection and design factor. So sometimes you see that it's better to work on material upgrade than application of biocides. Or sometimes you see that cathodic deportation is not working well. As a matter of fact, uh, it is an um, uh, inconclusive uh, myth of microbial corrosion um, practices that uh, reducing uh, your off potential by, off potential um, CP by minus 100 millivolt uh, will uh, solve your SRB MIC problem. Not all the time this happens. Anyway, you have five anti-corrosion measures and then you prepare a questionnaire. In that questionnaire, you ask for usefulness and frequency of use in addition to other. Like for example, you say, <coughs> uh, how frequently you are using, for example, biocide injection. And then 
you say and how useful it is to your system questions like that uh, ask at least three experts in the field about their interpretation regarding the questions asked then you rank these responses and give weight to them it is important to um, understand that these weights are all arbitrary all right but the relationship between these weights are not arbitrary so in my judgment for example as an expert application of biocide mm, could be very useful my colleague can say that it is useful but because of the harmful effects that it has on environment i really don't recommend it and my third colleague could say i don't know i have no idea if it is useful or not so there is a mathematical methodology to gather all these uh, uh, apparently diversified um, answers together put them under the same umbrella and then analyze it uh, when you go through steps one to four then you are ready to calculate a corrosion protection factor or cpf which shows you how well you have been um, able to do corrosion protection. Mr. Lisa, sorry to interrupt. You have another five minutes before question and answer. Sorry? You have another five minutes before okay. question and Oh, okay. Um, we started at nine and in my time it is 940 perhaps you have also added the time spent on introduction but i will try to wrap it up okay so these are the five major anti-corrosive uh, measures then you prepare questionnaire like for cathodic protection coating water chemistry material selection design and then you use a mathematical methodology that I have explained here. Um, uh, and um, unfortunately, it seems that I don't have enough time to go through it. And this is basically the uh, uh, calculation for corrosion protection factor using this formula. And then you can put the values you got from CPF range uh, and try to match it with corrosion severity based on NACE uh convention so that you will see that if for example the cpf is above 80 then corrosion uh, severity is low and if it is between 20 to 10 corrosion severity is severe and then uh, based on that you can uh, decide how to manage it the third example is uh, uh, sorry uh, an example for this uh, system I used it for a subsea pipeline. Uh, I prepared the uh, uh, questionnaire, the method, and the uh, methods that they have been using for that. I found three people as optimistic, conservative, and pessimistic. And for that, we came up with the average 73.5 that uh, based on this, uh, 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 table puts the corrosion uh, protection as moderate because it is between 40 and 80. It is not very good, it is better than nothing. Then the quantitative mathematical approach comes, it is based on my works, uh, the algorithm that I uh, uh, presented in Corrosion 2003 and also a paper I published out of it. Basically, uh, it is that you define your system, whatever the system, uh, into three uh, compartments. And for each system, for example, a uh, buried pipeline, you define uh, the so-called uh, danger list and uh, um, control list based on the mathematics given there. Um, when you came up with this danger list and control list, 
you are capable of basically defining all these uh, uh, issues that could be related to danger of corrosion and control of corrosion so that at the end of the day you come up with a software that looks like this it is asking some questions you put the values that you have uh, including the uh, capital value and shutdown damage and based on that you get some results for internal risk external risk and system risk with regards to uh, corrosion and uh, so the summary MIC is quite a complex electrochemical corrosion that for this uh, this process it is important to uh, consider all types of available mathematical models then um, it is possible to define algorithms and methods that can uh, let us uh, uh, identify um, uh, issues with regards to MIC and in this presentation I tried to present three approaches towards mathematic, mathematically modeling corrosion I mean microbial corrosion and I should say that it is not all you could have other approaches as well thank you very much for your attention Yes. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't hear it. Would you please repeat it slowly? Okay. We have question from Hasriza from Petronas. Yes. Hi, Dr. Reza. I'm currently working on mechanistic model of MIC. Mm -hmm. Comparing to mathematical models, several assumptions were not taken. How can we address this? And second question is, why on SRV and RV considered in the model? Biofilm comprises of various bacteria which form as consortium and they are synergetically <coughs> together contributing towards MIC. You can put the question in chat box. Okay, um, now uh, regarding the, all right, um, at the moment I can't, I can't find the uh, checkbox, but anyway, regarding the discrepancies that you can see between um, the models presented here and also the mechanistic um, um, approaches, uh, as you know, the uh, challenge for explaining mechanism or, or mechanisms uh, uh, of microbial corrosion dates back to 1930s if you go through that you will see that we have gone through a lot of theories that aimed at explaining the mechanisms behind microbial corrosion for example one of them was even uh, considering a um, phosphorus-like um, compound that would accelerate microbial corrosion. That phosphorus compound never found. So, and at the moment, we are basically uh, looking at two approaches, two mechanisms of microbial corrosion. Watch, one is CMIC, another one is EMIC. In EMIC uh, approach, which is the most uh, updated one, it is uh, the electron transfer between bacteria and metal uh, that is uh, becoming more and more uh, focused on. Uh, therefore, I cannot say that <clears throat> there is any discrepancy between these models uh, that I have uh, mentioned here and the models currently in use because the models that I um, uh, basically um, try to explain here are more or less phenomenological but the models that I uh, presented here were uh, aiming at quantification of, um, of um, microbial corrosion uh, and also bear in mind that uh, as I said what we have got so far as <coughs> prevailing mechanisms for MIC are not saying the last word Regarding why I considered SRB and IRB and not other materials, 
simply because I didn't have the uh, uh, required uh, facilities. You know, it is um, um, uh, it is uh, of course very interesting to see if we will get the same result when in addition to IRB we also have for example iron oxidizing bacteria in the system and if uh, we uh, in, uh, in, 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 in doing that uh, how the uh, mixed and single cultures will affect other metals as you could see from the paper that I published I have already worked out this on duplex stainless steel and here I shared with you the experience I had with carbon steel and I have um, one unpublished work, maybe someday I will publish it on uh, stainless steel 316L. But uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate that uh, we could go for further um, and deeper research should we have the uh, required funding. Yes? No, it's not going to cover SRB and IRB only because uh, the model will consider um, various types of bacteria based on their availability. Um, I, because um, as you saw from the uh, pr fuzzy probability functions, I used it with regards to the uh, features iron reducing bacteria could have. You could easily shift it for uh, sulfur oxidizing bacteria should the probability function uh, need any kind of uh, modification. So it is not for only IRB and SRB. I would assume that it would uh, be applicable to other types of bacterial combinations with okay. necessary corrections, of course. Okay. Uh, the third question from Chandra Satesh, Chandra Muthi. Uh, Can you ask? Yes. Can you tell us that it's less than two coatings to gain microbial corrosion in a sphere environment? Do this name is any? Anytime. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get it. C coating was the question. Yes. Yeah. Please do any. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. At the moment, in my company at Enimco Engineering Bebe in the Netherlands, we have uh, been successful in developing antimicrobial uh, coating <coughs> that at the moment has passed the uh, laboratory phase. It has shown very good resistance. Uh, and performance towards um, uh, bacteria and viruses because of the uh, technology that we have used it uh, used in there uh, and now we are uh, in the process of applying for funds to let us bring it to semi-industrial and then industrial phase uh, there are some um, 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 uh, companies that uh, claim they have um, developed uh, coatings with antimicrobial um, properties like for example uh, I remember one of them was using a technology that uh, I called as impregnated coating basically they have these coatings filled with biocide and then you wrap the uh, the coating around the, for example, a pile in the sea, and slowly, slowly, the biocide is being uh, oozed out, diffused out, so that the biofilm formation is interrupted. This obviously is quite um, uh, contrary to uh, environment protection because the biocide you uh, release into the environment will also kill other types of marine life 
or for example there were the, the, there were this um, company that they had uh, they, they claimed that uh, they had super super hydrophobic coatings that would not allow biofilm formation in the first place i didn't see it in action uh, i heard and read their claims but the one we have developed is based on um, nanotechnology and in the first place uh, based on the environmental um, um, factors uh, it gets uh, uh, stimulated it is smart smart coating and uh, it is stimulated and it will not allow biofilm formation in the first place this will also prevent uh, biofouling Mm, if I've got the correct the question correctly, the typical rate of corrosion by SRB is in the range of uh, uh, 1.75 millimeter per year, roughly two millimeter per year. But we have at least one uh, occasion um, of uh, subsea pipeline corrosion by SRB. Uh, back in 1989 uh, that uh, corresponded to 10 millimeter per year one centimeter so corrosion rates by SRV could be horribly uh, too high with regard to iron reducing bacteria you must bear in mind that IRB uh, could also have inhibitory uh, effect on corrosion I have explained it in my books uh, in details and also in uh, my training courses uh, that uh, bacteria uh, such iron reducing bacteria sometimes can accelerate corrosion with uh, very high rates at the moment I don't have the figure in my head but uh, sometimes under certain circumstances iron reducing bacteria could actually inhibit decelerate uh, corrosion 